Hello and welcome to Amigos IAS. I am Adnan. In today's segment, we will understand why Ladakh is protesting and why they are asking for separate statehood as well as inclusion in sixth schedule. So let's jump into this particular topic, guys. So here we will try to understand the perspective of Ladakh and what are their demands and basically what are their fears. Okay, so Ladakh's Kargil town observed a shutdown and hundreds of locals came out in support of activist Sonam Wangchuk. Okay, he is environmental activist and in engineer also and it is said that 3 Idiots movie is loosely based on his life. His climate related fast in sub-zero temperatures going to almost minus 11 degrees Celsius. And in the open sky, the fast is going on. It reached 16th day today. So, locals are supporting him also in this case and thousands are protesting for a long time. So, they are asking for what guys? Statehood and sixth scheduled status to this four year old union territory which came because of JNK Reorganization Act 2019. So, let's see. Following the repeal of Article 370, instead of repeal the right word would be uh, Article 370 is still there in the constitution. It has just been made inoperative. So, in 5th August uh, 2019, we have seen this, okay, it created what, uh, this uh, Article 370, which was giving special provisions to Jammu and Kashmir, this was made inoperative and later, Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act 2019 was brought, which has done the bifurcation here. So, Ladakh as a separate union territory has come and Jammu and Kashmir also has a separate union territory. But the only catch here is what here, Ladakh is a union territory but it does not have its own legislative assembly fine so which union territories have assemblies new delhi has Pondicherry or puducherry has it okay so puducherry it should be here guys new term so new name is there puducherry and then jammu and kashmir even though there have been no elections for many years there still they have the provision of assembly ladakh does not have any assembly of its own which means as we understand union territories are directly administered by the central government and many of the people, they want autonomy. That means downgrading of a status of a state to union territory is not being liked by many of the locals of Ladakh. That is the point here. Because if you have your own assembly, you can make your own laws. That is the most important point here. Fine. So ever since the separation, they felt in the initial stages that maybe development will come and they'll be having some safeguards, but it was not done. The promises were not met as told by the organizations here. So Leh Apex Body is there and Kargil Democratic Alliance. These are amalgamation of uh, political and social and religious groups. They came together as an umbrella organization and they are protesting. They had delegations with the Home Minister also, but the talks are not uh, successful. Fine. So, they are saying that Ladakh should be brought under 6th schedule. Okay. And let us try to understand what this 6th schedule is. But before that, let us see the map here. So, as you can see, of course, some of these parts are not under our control, guys. And Leh, Ladakh is this particular area. And there are two districts in Ladakh. Okay. Leh and Kargil. These two districts are there. And if you see the representation, there is only one parliamentary constituency in Ladakh. They are asking for Okay, one each for Kargil and one for Leh. That means the districts are there, no. So, for this, they are asking for more MP seats. That is their demand, guys. Because as of now, only one MP seat in Lok Sabha, they have Rajya Sabha, no representation. That is what? Representation is very important in a parliamentary democracy. That ensures that you are having the say in your own development on your own future, guys. And now, if you see in this case, from... China's and Pakistan's border it is guys here as you can see in this both cases here. Now in this particular situation, I will erase this. On the northern side, Chinese threat is there and they are saying on the southern side, Indian industries, the mining uh, companies, they are all going to destroy the ecology of Ladakh. That is their concern. I will come back to that point. Okay. So just have an idea about this map guys. So we will see what are the provisions of the scheduled areas and tribal areas in the constitution of India. So, article 244 in part 10 of the constitution of India deals with the special administration for scheduled areas and tribal areas. That means even though scheduled areas also mean there are tribal preponderance. Okay. So, we use this in the context of administration of these 10 states of India who are there in the fifth schedule guys. Okay. 
So in this fifth schedule, we are not adding this Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. In this fifth schedule, we have states like Telangana, Maharashtra, Gujarat, AP, Jharkhand, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, all these states are there guys, 10 states. So that is called fifth schedule of the constitution, the scheduled areas where tribal populations are more. Now, sixth schedule, that means what here guys, 244 article talks about the administration of scheduled areas in tribal areas. 244 clause 1 is this, 244 clause 2 deals with the six schedule areas which is Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, Mizoram. These are having lot of tribal populations and they have not got assimilated into the mainstream. That is a concern here. Fine. So we need to make sure that they are a part of the mainstream. We need to promise certain safeguards because they are having lot of tribal populations. Fine. So please don't forget about this fifth and sixth schedule states. Memorize them. And what is the special provisions here guys? If any body is any tribal areas are there in those fifth schedule states, they are given okay tribal advisory councils. For the six scheduled states, what is provided here? Autonomous district councils are provided. We will come back to that point eventually. Okay, autonomous districts, autonomous regions. So we can write them as autonomous district councils, autonomous regional councils. These two are there in the sixth schedule, guys. That means in these four states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram, we can have these autonomous districts where they have their own freedom to make their own laws. That is the crux area here. If there are different scheduled tribes in one autonomous district, so it's not like only all similar tribes are there in one district. No, if there are more different types of tribes in the same autonomous district, what happens? Governor can divide the district into several autonomous regions and there they can establish other autonomous districts. Fine. So autonomous district is there, generally composed of homogeneous tribal population. If it is more than one tribal population, governor has the power to create more autonomous regions to respect the diversity of the tribes. The governor also has the power to organize, reorganize the autonomous districts. He can increase or decrease the boundaries or alter the names of any autonomous district. Okay. When it comes to the scheduled areas of fifth schedule, the president can increase or decrease their size. In the case of sixth schedule here, it is the governor who has such powers. Please make sure you understand these points. They can be asked as you know, in the MCQs in the prelims guys. Okay, so here you can see 10 tribal areas are there in this. So Assam has three, North Kachar Hills District, Karbi Anglong and Borderland is there. Then Khasi, Garo and Jainti are there in Meghalaya. Tripura has one and Chakma, Mara and Lai are there in Meg Mizoram guys. So how many are there as you can count here? There are around 10 guys. So 10 tribal areas are there as of now in the sixth schedule. Okay, and now what happens here? As I told you, ADCs and ARCs, these two are like self-governance things. There shall be a district council for each autonomous district. How many members are there? 30 members are there. In this, four members are nominated by the governor and remaining 26 members are elected on the basis of adult suffrage. They have five-year term and the ones who are special representatives whom governor can nominate, they can be there in that position till they enjoy the pleasure of the governor guys. Okay, there shall be separate regional councils, ARCs also for each area, okay, in the autonomous region. So these district councils and regional councils, what kind of powers they have and why Ladakh is asking for that. Okay, they are empowered to make laws on matters like lands, management of forest other than the protected reserved forest inheritance of property and they can make laws for regulations and controls of money lending, trading by any person other than the STs in that particular uh, scheduled district guys. All laws made under this provision of course require the governor of the state. That means governors have been given more powers when it comes to the administration of the sixth schedule guys. Fine. So these powers are there with the uh, district councils and the regional councils and what about justice then they can have their own court system also see here district and regional councils can have their own village and district council courts why they can have the trial of suits and cases with all parties to the dispute belong to the scheduled tribes all those cases can be heard by the village and district council courts the high courts have jurisdiction over which cases that means governor can decide on which cases the high court can also entertain the appeals fine the council courts are not given power in some serious cases like let's say the offense is punishable by death 
or imprisonment for five or more years in this kind of cases the council courts are not given power skies okay that is one more opportunity for them and then as you can see on this district and regional councils see the powers they can collect the land revenue they can impose taxes on professions trades animals vehicles etc councils are given power to grant licenses or leases for the extraction of minerals because tribal areas have this enormous okay uh, minerals are there in those regions so to give licenses also these district councils regional councils can give them okay fine so they are also given power to establish and construct or manage primary schools dispensaries markets cattle ponds fisheries roads road transport everything guys in the districts scheduled districts okay to the autonomous districts and regions i'll just come back to this point next slide guys the governor can appoint a commission to investigate and provide a report on any issue regarding the management of these autonomous district regions okay that is their powers here guys fine they can do any kind of regulations with respect to the management of this autonomous regions now the last point here the acts of parliament or state legislature do not directly apply to the autonomous districts and regions okay there are some exceptions are there why this provision is brought because to make sure that the parliament or state's laws should not affect the tribals their customs their religious the religions okay that means we need to give some special safeguards to those regions if we directly apply parliaments or state laws on them it is going to impact their life and they may not integrate into the mainstream that is why what happens here guys pay attention here president or governor will decide let us see specifically what happens in the case of assam as we have seen assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram in assam what happens is governor will decide whether parliament or state laws are applying to them or not which laws of parliament which laws of state should apply to those district councils governor will decide in which in which state assam what about the other three states then meghalaya tripura mizoram here the governor has the power with respect to acts of state legislature and president with respect to the parliament imagine parliament passed any law and whether that law should apply to meghalaya tripura or mizoram or not president will decide let's say meghalaya tripura or mizoram's state assembly has passed a law whether to apply that to dot uh, adcs or arcs or not is decided by the governor that means state laws governor in these three states parliament's laws president will decide whether they apply or not with what conditions in assam both state laws and the parliament's laws whether to apply or not it is the governor who will take the decision please do not make mistake in this case so this actually concludes this particular sixth schedule there is one more thing called as special provisions in article 371 371 371 a until 371 j many states in india are given special provisions okay but these are giving only some exceptions they do not provide enough autonomy like the autonomous district councils or the arcs guys that means even if you are providing this 371 article for ladakh they are not accepting it because example let's see telangana andhra pradesh 371 capital d we are having special provisions that means we can have locals reservation in the public employment guys that means residents can be criteria for employment in our states we got this because of this article 371 capital d in this way you can provide some exceptions some modifications let's say 371 capital a nagaland they have their own customs you know they have their, they have their own way of life they have their own hill councils we cannot apply all laws of the parliament or state on to the nagaland people that means these are some exceptions given to these states special provisions what we call them but this does not provide the kind of autonomy for the tribals as this six schedule gives and now the case of ladakh is most related to what guys it is related to their culture okay it's related to their employment opportunities it's related to their okay also the ecology i can say the climate aspect here ecology culture jobs etc that means simply say we can understand the aspect of culture and jobs climate related aspects also are there as we you know ladakh has all the glaciers and almost 2 billion population okay nearby china india bangladesh all these are there right so fresh water is supplied by these glaciers and as we are understanding climate change is going on 
and the impact of global warming we can see the devastating impacts climate refugees are coming because of melting of glaciers now if central government directly because it's union territory now if they make all the rules and regulations and locals are not given any opportunities let me just uh, okay uh, show myself on the screen guys so if locals uh, the ladakh people don't have the opportunity to make their own rules and regulations as provided in sixth schedule why they are asking because now in parliament can make laws because it is union territory president can directly make regulations for union territories mining industries or any other for example let's say government of india planning many hydropower projects geothermal projects green hydrogen projects all these are being planned in ladakh people there are afraid that because of this unregulated mining and industries their ecology is going to be destroyed and these people depend on their region let's say the uh, there are people who are like uh, shepherds they need the grazing grounds so all these ecological aspects also are integrated into the demands by the ladakh people guys that means if they get the opportunity to have this six schedule they feel that they will have more say whether to allow that kind of destructive development or not and they are also asking for representation of the uh, in the parliament also like i told one seat each for le as well as the kargil uh, district guys that means the entire fulcrum of this particular issue is based on self governance and they feel that they have been betrayed by the central government and they have not kept the promises they are asking for the statehood they are asking for inclusion in sixth schedule also so i hope you understood the entire issue guys with respect to our of course upsc requirement also is there here so all those aspects what i told regarding governor and president and what opportunities are there for the district councils and regional councils what their powers lie please make sure you have an entire idea about this criticism aspect also is there it's not like just because you include them in six schedule they will get all the opportunities six schedule has its own problems many times states do not give the power to the autonomous district councils guys and a lot of times locals also are not aware about their powers corruption also is there and many times the courts also are not properly constituted in those autonomous district councils guys so six schedule may have its own problems but people of ladakh are like give us the opportunity for self governance and on crucial decisions of jobs safeguarding their culture the fragile ecology of the himalayas in this aspects they want to chart their own course of development they want to take their own decisions and that's why these protests are going on on a large scale because it's a matter of their livelihood guys so i hope you understood this topic if you have any questions please post in the comments i'll come back another day with some other topic keep watching amigos is thank you